Hey, how's it going? Okay, so today I figured I would do a recipe for a very common dish that's at least as common here in the States, but lately there have been a lot of variations to it. Classically, it includes chicken, but um, a lot of variations have included tofu, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So this will be a, a vegetarian, actually a vegan version of tofu, uh, general sows, chicken, but with tofu. First we're going to start with a quarter cup of vegetable stock, which I already have here. Actually, I like, really like this better than bullion product. It's a great product. It comes in a very concentrated form. You just add roughly a teaspoon of it to a cup of water and you have instant vegetable broth. So that's what I have in here so far. And to that we're going to add three tablespoons of soy. In this case I'm using a uh, La Choy light soy, it's a gluten free soy. I'm just basically, I'm gonna kind of eyeball it here rather than measuring every single ingredient out. Classically, the next ingredient is hoisin sauce, and hoisin is basically a Chinese barbecue sauce. Don't laugh, but right now, with us being on lockdown, I'm using regular barbecue sauce. This is actually a sweet and spicy barbecue sauce, and I'm just gonna use two tablespoons. Just one. Again, rough, these are rough estimates. Some people like things a little bit sweeter, some like them a little sour, some people like things spicier. We're gonna be adding some spicy ingredients in a little bit. A tablespoon of rice vinegar, and I'm using the lid, actually the cap to this bottle. It's about a tablespoon of rice vinegar. A little bit of maple syrup. Maple syrup is nice because not only does it add sweetness, but it also adds a little earthy flavor. It's actually a, a more of a complex sweetness. So that is about a tablespoon of maple syrup. I like to add regular old table sugar, about a tablespoon of that. We're going to stir that up a little bit. Our next ingredient is sesame oil. The recipe that you'll see will call for just regular sesame oil. I found this hot sesame oil recently and I really like it. So I'm going to use about a teaspoon of that. Okay, you can use more or less. Feel free to use regular soy sauce. I mean, I'm sorry, sesame oil if you'd like. You don't have to use the spicy. It depends on your spice level. Next two ingredients are going to be garlic. We have four cloves of garlic and about three tablespoons of um, ginger. I'm going to add those. This is going to become the marinade and actually, I'm sorry, not the marinade, the sauce for the tofu. So we're putting all these in. I just minced those ahead of time, add it all together. So again, that becomes most of the sauce that we use later to cook the tofu. In. Okay, so I'll put that aside for now. And next, we're going to start with the tofu. Let me just clean this up. Okay, so for the tofu, I'm using an extra firm tofu. I like extra firm because it'll hold up better. And you'll see also in the uh, recipe to drain and rinse your tofu. So what you're going to do is, after you cut this open, there's going to be a lot of water in here. You're going to drain that out put it between two slices or three slices, whatever, of uh, paper towels. And I know if you're watching this video now, paper towels are scarce. So if you have a paper, um, just a regular kitchen towel, you can use that and keep draining it. Press it down, keep doing that until all of the water comes out of the tofu. A lot of the, the recipes for this dish will call for taking the tofu and cutting them into cubes. But I like to cut them in just rough pieces. If you think about it, this is substituting chicken. If you had chicken, you wouldn't cut them into cubes. You would cut them into all different shapes and sizes. So that's what I have here. So what's in this bowl is the same thing as the pound or 16 ounces of the tofu, drained, pressed, and dried out. And I just kind of broke it up with my fingers. Next thing is, in this bowl, right here, I have a third cup of cornstarch, a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of pepper. I'm gonna take the tofu, add it to that. And then I'm just gonna to toss those gently. 
I like to get a, a ball that's really big so that if my spatula doesn't move those around, I can actually toss them a little bit just to give it a little help. I wanna keep doing that until all of the pieces are coated. So what I'm looking for here is if there's any cornstarch left in the bottom of the bowl, which there isn't, put just a little bit more cornstarch in. That looks good, you can see it's hard to tell because the tofu is still a little bit wet, so it's going to immediately absorb the cornstarch, but we'll put that aside for now. And the next step is going to be to take either a wok, um, a saute pan, or a cast iron pan. In this case, since I'm using the induction burner, I'm gonna use the cast iron pan. But you can use, feel free to use a wok. This is a really nice uh, handled wok or handled stir-fry pan. Any thick, heavy pan that has high sides will work. I wanna make sure that I have my plate with some paper towels ready. I'm gonna need that in a little bit. And it's my cast iron skillet. I have about a third of a cup of regular vegetable oil. You can use canola oil. I wouldn't use something like an olive oil because it's a little too, um, too delicate for that. But any vegetable oil, canola, vegetable, peanut, we'll let this come up to temperature. So um, a really easy or a quick way to find out when the oil comes up to temperature is to take a little bit of the tofu and drop it in the oil. Stir this oil around a little bit. We wanna make sure the oil just covers the bottom of the pan. So if that's not the case, then you can put a little bit more in. If you are cooking healthier, if you're cutting down on your oil, you can easily bake these. Just put them on a parchment lined baking tray in the oven, 425 degrees for maybe 20, 25 minutes until they start to get brown. Okay. So this tofu, you can hear it sizzling. So I know it is, the oil is hot enough. I'm gonna start adding my pieces. I wanna make sure I don't add too many at once because they will stick together. Plus if I add a lot, they'll actually cool the pan down. So I wanna make sure I don't do that. So about half of it in this case, because I have a, I have a decent sized pan. This is a uh, 10 inch cast iron pan. and I'm just going to move these around. I'm gonna watch for them. As soon as they start turning brown on one side, I'm gonna flip them over. So this is the second batch. We already fried the first batch. This is what's remaining. And as you can see in the pan, I'm getting them brown. I'm gonna to try to brown them on both sides. This is actually, <laughs> this is a test of patience. The more patience you have, the more even browning you'll get. So um, try not to look too closely because you'll see, I might have rushed this a little bit, but still, it's gonna be really good. It's gonna be crunchy. You can hear it sizzling. Um, the video that we posted previously talked about using our eyes. I can see me. Um, using our eyes when we cook, but we also wanna use our nose and our ears. We wanna use all five senses. So in this case, I'm also using my nose. I wanna make sure that nothing smells burned. If that's the case, the best thing to do is take it off the heat, put it somewhere else so that I can evaluate the situation. The worst thing that I could do is leave it on the stove and panic. Once we panic, then bad things can happen. I could end up dropping something. Again, I'm working with hot grease, so I could unfortunately cause a fire, which I don't want to do. Again, the best thing to do is just pull the pan, remove it from the heat, and figure out what's going on, why it happened. Okay, so I'm gonna just put them aside right now, and I'm transferring them to a plate that has paper towel on it. I want to collect any of that excess oil that they might have absorbed. I want to also want to make sure that most of that oil is gone. A safer way is to use your tongs. Move this around with the tongs. And then put it aside. Don't put it right in the garbage can because again, this is very hot. I'm just gonna put it in that bowl that I had the cornstarch mixture. Once that's done, bring my pan 
back up to temperature. It's going on medium high. I had the tofu on a high heat. Actually, on this particular um, cooker, the high is 425 degrees, if that helps. If not, we're gonna go back down to 375. I need to be careful because this is very hot. So if I put liquid into hot oil, it will splash. I wanna make sure that if I do it, I stick back, okay? Not a problem. So if you're asking why I cut the garlic and ginger so small, here's why. We're not cooking it by themselves. Some recipes start with putting some of the garlic and ginger in some oil, sauteing the oil just a little bit just to kind of bloom that, that garlic and that ginger to get that flavor out. But in this case, if I chop it fine enough, all the heat that's gonna collect in this pan right now will be enough to just cook the, uh, both the ginger and the garlic. Taking tofu, adding it to this mixture, and very carefully kind of letting that tofu absorb that sauce. Very gently moving these around. I don't want to break these into too many smaller pieces. I already have a good amount of small pieces here to figure out when they're ready. You'll start to hear, or I'm sorry, you'll start to smell that. It'll smell kind of almost like popcorn or like toasted nuts. As soon as you start to smell that, you want to take that off the heat. Here's where I'm using my ears. I can hear the sizzling. So if it's sizzling, I know it's up to temperature. And I know it's at a good temperature. I want to make sure that I'm very cautious with it. Stirring these around. And see, as I'm stirring them, I can feel the crunchiness of those pieces. How long do you want to stir it? Really, as long as it takes for most of that sauce to get absorbed. So however much time that was, was it two or three minutes maybe? I'm gonna take these, plate them. And actually, I lucked out today. We have chives growing in a pot on our deck and they're, they're a really nice size. So if I don't have chives, I can use scallions. I'm just going to cut these in half. And cut them into just basically random sized pieces. Some can be really small, some can be a little bit bigger. I like a more rustic look. And I like to refer to it as kind of the way that grandma would have it. You know, she wouldn't make sure that every single piece was perfect or every single piece was the same size. Some of the pieces might be really long, but that's all right. That's what it's all about. That's what hearty home cooking is about. Put a little bit of these over the top. One more ingredient, one final ingredient. Sometimes you'll see this dish with a red pepper or some chopped up red peppers. I love this Korean red pepper. It's really bright. I don't know how well you can see how bright nice bright red, which tells me it's got a really nice flavor. Put a little bit of that on top. It really depends on how much you like it. You'll see there's really not a lot of sauce left in this dish. Please, please, please feel free to double the amount of sauce. I'll have the recipe included somewhere down below. But uh, again, if this is a little too dry for you, a great way to serve this would be over rice. So just double the amount of sauce, pour half of it in, cook your tofu in that and then use the rest of the sauce heated up separately to serve over the rice. And there you have it. Vegetarian, vegan, general sows, chicken with tofu.